Hi everyone, this is our second video on the topic of mechanical vibrations. Um, our first video served as an introduction to the topic uh, and included an example of free undamped motion. And the goal of this video is to explore when the system has free damped motion. So recall that uh, linear differential equations frequently appear as mathematical models of mechanical systems and electrical circuits. And we're going to look at the example when we have a mass M attached to both a spring that exerts on it a force uh, and also a dash pot or a shock absorber uh, that also exerts a force on the mass. And we saw in the last video that with damping, but no external force, then the differential equation we've been studying takes the form mass uh, times x double prime plus cx prime plus kx equals zero, where the c and the k come as a result of the forces from the spring and the dash pot. Now, alternatively, we can rewrite this equation if we divide everybody through by the mass m then we can rewrite this equation as x double prime plus 2px prime plus omega naught squared x equals zero, where omega naught is the square root of k divided by m. That's the corresponding undamped circular frequency that we saw in the last video. And p is c divided by 2m. And just to help you visualize those pieces, so again, if we take that original equation, just divide through by m, our equation looks like this. And so the c divided by m, that's what we're calling 2p. And the k divided by m, that's what we're calling omega naught squared. Now, if we want to solve this differential equation, we of course need to start with the characteristic equation. So our characteristic equation will look like r squared plus 2 pr plus omega naught squared equals zero. We're going to simply apply the quadratic formula. It's not the prettiest looking thing we've ever seen, but it's the basic uh, usage of the quadratic formula. And so we see that our characteristic equation has two roots. Uh, we clean up, pull out that square root of four and cancel some twos. So it cleans up to minus p plus or minus the square root of p squared minus omega naught squared. And so then whether or not we have a single real root of multiplicity two, two distinct real roots or complex roots uh, depends on the sign of that p squared minus omega naught squared. And so if we use the fact that p is, uh, that p squared rather is c squared over 4m squared and that omega naught squared is k over m, and then get a common denominator of 4m squared. So then we see that we can rewrite our roots r1 and r2 as minus p plus or minus the square root of c squared minus 4km divided by 2m. And so everything really comes down to then what's under that square root. And so critical damping uh, will be given when c is equal to the square root of 4km. And from here, we want to study the three possible cases that can arise, all depending upon what's happening under that square root. So the first case is what we call the overdamped case. And that happens when c squared is bigger than 4km. So because c is relatively large in this case, we're dealing with a strong resistance in comparison with a relatively weak spring or a small mass. And so we go back to these formulas for our roots, notice that if c squared is greater than 4km, that tells us that we're going to have two distinct real roots, r1 and r2. And so our position function, x of t, is going to look like some constant c1 times e to the r1t plus c2 r to the 2t. Now, graphically, in this overdamped case, uh, we wanted to graph the motion. Uh, it would look like this, something like this. So we see for some different values um, of our constants. But notice that regardless, as t approaches infinity, then our position function x of t approaches zero. And the body settles to its equilibrium position without any oscillations. 
the system does not oscillate. It has no periodic components and it could cross that equilibrium position at most once. So that's the overdamped case when C squared is bigger than 4 km. The second case is what we call that critically damped case when C squared is equal to 4 km. Again, going back to our formula for the roots, in this case, we see that that square root part completely disappears. So we have uh, equal roots, R1 and R2 um, is a single root of multiplicity 2. And so in that case, our position function has the form x of t equals c1 plus c2t e to the minus pt. Now, in this case, the body passes through its equilibrium position at most once. The resistance of the dash pot is just large enough to damp out any oscillation. But even a slight reduction in resistance will bring us to that under damped case. There are some um, graphs um, of, of what this motion might look like in the critically damped case. Notice again, as t approaches infinity, x of t approaches zero. So the body passes through its equilibrium position at most once. The resistance of the dash pot is just large enough to damp out any of those oscillations, but again, even a slight reduction in resistance will bring us to the underdamped case. Now, our last option is what we call the underdamped case when C squared is smaller than 4 km. Again, going back to that formula for our roots, in this case, with that piece under the square root will be negative. So our characteristic equation now has two complex conjugate roots. And the general solution looks like e to the minus pt times a constant multiple of cosine plus a constant multiple of sine. Now, the action of the dash pot has at least two effects in this case. First of all, it exponentially damps the oscillations in accord with time varying amplitude, and it slows the motion. So that is, the dash pot decreases the frequency of the motion. Here's a picture of what that graph might look like in a couple of different of the underdamped cases. Notice that the mass now crosses the equilibrium position infinitely many times. Um, here's the summary of three um, of the three different cases: the overdamped, where we have uh, two distinct real roots; the critically damped that you see in green. Um, the critically damped was when we had one more root of multiplicity two. And then the blue graph there is the under damped case when we had complex conjugate roots. Notice that in all three cases, as t approaches infinity, the position function approaches zero. And this makes sense from a conservation of energy point of view. While the system is in motion, the damping wastes away whatever energy the system has started out with. But there's no forcing function to supply the system with additional energy. So consequently, eventually the motion comes to a halt. I will conclude with a, a quick example. Um, suppose we have a mass of three kilograms that's attached to both a spring with a spring constant k of 63 and a dash pot of damping constant c equals 30. The mass is set in motion with an initial position of two and an initial velocity of two. We want to find the position function and determine whether the motion is overdamped, critically damped, or underdamped. So when we look at our differential equation, using the fact that the mass is 3, that we have a damping constant of 30 and a spring constant of 63, uh, an initial position of 2 and an initial velocity of 2, then our system is modeled by uh, this initial value problem. So we want to solve our differential equation, uh, the characteristic equation, 3r squared plus 30r plus 63 equals 0. Pull out a 3, and then it will factor into r plus 3, r plus 7. So we have two real roots, negative 3 and negative 7. The general solution will be c1e to the minus 3t plus c2e to the minus 7t. We apply the initial conditions. Um, the fact that x of 0 is 2 tells us that c1 plus c2 is 2. The fact that our initial velocity of, is 2 tells us that minus 3 c1 minus 7 c2 equals 2. And when we solve that system, uh, we find that c1 is 4 and c2 is negative 2. 
So our position function becomes 4 e to the minus 3t minus 2 e to the minus 7t. Because we were in the case where we had two distinct real roots, then this would be an example of over damped motion. Great. Um, two quick final notes. Um, here are three extra examples of potential um, equations and their solutions, um, one of which is over damped, the second is critically damped, and the third is under damped. Um, and the, the details for these solutions are available in my slides um, that are posted on Blackboard. And then finally, the one thing we have not yet discussed um, is the case where there's an external force. Um, so vibrating structures like buildings, bridges, and highways sometimes experience a dangerous oscillation called resonance um, that can cause the partial or complete destruction of the structures. And so in this case, our mechanical vibration, our system has this external force, it's a non-homogeneous differential equation. Um, and this is the, the example of what happened uh, in the case of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. There's a link here you can Google or look on YouTube uh, to find a video if you've never seen uh, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. It's, it's definitely worth taking a look at. Um, also in my slides are then kind of a detailed mathematical explanation for what happened um, using this, this type of modeling system. Thanks so much. That's all for now.